In this video, we're gonna go through some referee training, some procedures that referees out on the sporting clay course keeping score should be following, okay? There's a, there's a few, few things that are really important. The number one thing, all the referees out on the course must be wearing their ear and eye protection. That's mandatory on the course. So before you get out there, make sure you have your ear and eye protection. If you're out there and this referee and the weather comes up, you're gonna be spending the whole day out there, so make sure you dress appropriately, sometimes bringing a rain jacket if needed. Now, onto the scoring part. We have a couple different scenarios in sporting clays when you walk up to the station. The station could be presented with a single, it could be presented with a report pair, could be presented with a true pair, or often called a sim or simo pair. There's a situation also sometimes where we have what's called a following or a Raphael pair. We're gonna go through some of the rules of how those things are scored. A single is a single target. In most instances, it's, it's full use of the gun, which is maximum of two shots and the shooter can hit that on either the first or the second shot. You will score the target if a piece, a visible piece comes off of any clay as kill. If, a, if there is no visible piece off of the clay, it is a lost target. For a novice referee or for someone just getting started, you have to make note that there is something that comes out of the shotgun called a wad. It's a small piece of plastic and you wanna make sure that you're recognizing the difference between a chip of the clay and the wad. The wad is, does not count towards a broken target. So any target will be scored as kill or lost. You could also call it dead or lost. When we move on to a report pair, same things hold true in regards to scoring a dead or a lost bird. The targets will be shot in a report pair as such that there are two targets. You will launch the first target on the call of pull. The shooter will call pull or make some sound to launch the bird you will push the button, you will launch the target. At the sound of the gun, at the moment the shooter fires at the first clay, you will push the button instantly to throw the second target. There is no delay in between pushing the button after the sound of the gun. So to repeat that, we have a report pair. The shooter will call pull, you'll launch target one. At the sound of the gun, regardless if the shooter hits or misses the first shot, you'll instantly push the button to launch target two. That's a report pair. You will score that pair, or any pair for that matter, as in the following ways. As a killed pair or a dead pair, a lost pair, or it can be killed where the shooter hits the first bird and misses the second, or misses the first bird and hits the second. So we could have a dead lost, which is the first bird is dead and the second bird is lost, or a lost dead. You will be marking that on the scorecard as such with an X or a slash for a dead bird and a zero or an O for a lost bird. After the shooter has completed the sequence of targets, you will announce if the shooter what the shooter has come out with. So if the shooter has killed the pair all three times, he has a score of six. So you'll say shooter number 248 out with a six. You'll write six in the box and you'll initial that to make sure that it's official. Before the shooter leaves that station, you're gonna write six on your master sheet. The master sheet is what stays with you at the station and allows you to keep track of the scores in the event that the scorecard was lost or in the event that we had a shooter that we thought who was cheating and altering their score. Let's talk about a simo pair, often called a true pair. Simo or simultaneous true pair, two targets are launched at the same time. You'll either hit both buttons at the same time or if your controller is set up properly, you'll be able to hit one button and launch both birds at the same time simultaneously. On a true pair, you're scoring the same way as a report. Dead pair, lost pair, dead lost, lost dead, depending what the results are of the shooter. You're watching the targets closely to look for that visible piece or visible chip off the bird. We need to remember, dust off of the clay does not count as a, as a broken target. We're also making sure, we look to make sure there was a piece off of the clay, not the wadding coming out of the shotgun. Some other things that you need to make sure when the shooters walk up to the cage, you're always gonna address them professionally. Announce, announce your name, say you're glad for them to be here. Make sure you have the first shooter up first. Ask them if their cards are in order. So if you look down at the cards and we got John up first, John's shooter number 78, Ask, make sure John is in the cage. Ask them if the, if the cards are in the correct order. Sometimes they get shuffled around. 
If they're not sure, just read off the names real quick to them so they can confirm that we have the correct order. When they're in the box, after they've shot the, the pair of targets, after both shots are fired, not in between, not after the first shot's fired, after both shots are fired, you're going to announce the result of the pair like we had just went over. Dead pair, dead loss, lost pair, lost dead. You're going to, you're going to announce that. You want to announce that clearly. Clear that everyone can hear. You don't have to shout. But remember, these guys could be wearing earplugs. These girls could be wearing earplugs. We want to make sure that you announce the score so that they can, that they can hear it. There should be no use of your cell phone while you're out there and receiving calls and texting while you're, while you're on the stand. It's a, we want you to act professionally. Often at big championships, these people spend a lot of money to get there. We have the potentially the world's best shooters or the nation's best shooters there or the region's best shooters. And we want you're there to officiate. You're there to go do a job. We want you to take your job seriously. How are you today? Doing well. Thanks for coming out. How are you doing? Good, thank you. You uh, have the cards in the correct order? Yes, I think so. We got George up, shooter number 462. That's correct. Okay, we got Pablo up second, and John Doe is up third. Okay, uh, everybody's here and ready to view targets? Yes, they are. You guys good? Okay. We've got two standard clays here. First bird's coming off the left side. It's a quartering bird. Second bird is a teal going up, up and out. We're going to take a look at them. First bird you probably see coming out of this bush right here. Coming from where? Just in top of that bush. Just there. over top of the bush there on the left hand side. Give me one second here. Now we're ready, sir. On your call, it's going to be a report pair. You've got three pairs today, and they're standard targets. Thank you. Yep. Pull. Bang. Must see that one more time. You get one more pair. You have a maximum of two pairs, sir. Thank you. Pull. Bang. Thank you. Okay. Everybody ready? Trapper's ready. We've got George, 462, on your call, sir. Thank you very much. Bow. Pair killed. Bow. Lost and dead. Bow. Dead and lost. Shooter is out with a four. Thank you, George. Thank you very much. Next shooter we have is Pablo, my man. Seven, shooter number 781. Trapper is ready. On your call, sir. Bow. Dead pair. George Digweed, four, shooter number 462, is out with a six. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out. I've rotated here. Got you on the proof sheet. I've rotated for you. John is going to be up first on the next station. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Enjoy your day. We'll talk a moment about all the procedures with scorecards and master sheets and we went through announcing the targets and calling out the final score when they step out of the station. You're going to rotate the card to get ready for the next shooter. You can initial it right away um, to make sure you're ready. Some, some referees would like to write the shooter's numbers down on their master sheet or their proof sheet as soon as they get the cards. That enables them to be a little bit more efficient instead of doing that at the end. When the shooter steps out of the cage, you're going to, the final shooter is shot. You're going to make sure you have all the scores marked on the master sheet. Thank them for coming out. You're going to call on the next squad. You're going to hand them back the cards. As you get the cards from the next squad, you can get ready to show the targets. You need to be efficient with the scorecards, shuffling them, handling them, writing the scores down on the score sheets. Often if a shooter has a malfunction and you have to repeat a pair like we had talked about, there's a spot on the bottom of the card. You mark it. The shooter gets three malfunctions for the day, whether that's ammo or gun malfunctions. After the fourth malfunction, any attempts at the targets after that in the event that he has a malfunction are lost. Regarding this, you've handed the shooter his cards. He's left the station. He's carried on. He's went out of your sight. He's no longer at the station. He's come back and he said, well, I, I got to the last stand and I realized you marked me for a five out of six and I hit all six. When the shooter has left the stand, you cannot change the scorecard. 
somebody could have come back three or four stands later and said, oh, I hit this bird or missed that. I, I didn't miss that bird. I hit this bird. You're not going to be able to remember. The only discretion there is the shooter has stepped away. You remember that he, he ran the station and you happen to mark it on the wrong spot or you marked it on the wrong card. You marked it on his mates or his squad mates card. You can change that in the certainty that you know that that shooter has scored those birds. If he's less that station though, and you can't remember that he's scored those birds, you're not permitted to change the score. Any discrepancies where the shooter is getting hostile or he believes he hit the bird or it was a no bird or he's coming back to change cards, something that you would classify as maybe the guy is pushing the rules and trying to push over on you to, to score better. Remember, this is a championship and somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. We want to make sure the integrity of the championship was, is upheld. If you're not sure if the person's doing the right thing and you believe they're trying to get, get one over on you, simply stop, call the course manager, get the course manager out there, Explain to him the situation, if it's a situation that you're not sure how to handle, and he can handle it from that. Same thing goes with if you get someone that's just a little bit getting worked up and hostile. Um, get the course manager out there. That's what he's out there for. He's, he's, he's in the position over you, and he can make final decisions on any situation that you're not sure of. Um, some other things that are important when we're out on the range as a referee that we want to pay attention to. Often on the final pair, a shooter has three pairs or he has four pairs at your station. Some referees will say, final pair, sir, or, or final pair. Whether it's a guy or a girl, they'll, they'll announce that it's the final pair. That's not required. Personally, as a shooter myself, I would rather that the referee didn't make any comments that weren't necessary. So I know that I have three pairs. You know that we have three pairs. If I've shot two, there's one left. It's not really necessary to announce that. If you're trying to decide what is best for the shooter, I would not announce it. If he has shot his three pairs and he was about to shoot again, just instantly remind him that he's done, unload the gun, and please step out. Some other instances of referees. The shooters are there to shoot, and they want to keep their mind in the right place. We want you to introduce yourself, be friendly. It's not a time to really be talking and chatting about what went on, etc. If the shooting had finished, catch up with them later and talk with them. Um, Another pet peeve of a lot of shooters is they might step in the box and the, the referee looks at their card and meaning well and wanting to compliment them, they look and say, oh, wow, you're shooting really well. You know, the best, best scorecard I've seen come through here or, wow, you, it looks like you're shooting great. Keep those comments to yourself. We don't need really that distraction to enter the shooter's mind. I know it's all, all good, meant well and, and encouragement for the shooter, but sometimes that's just enough to get him thinking about the fact that he hasn't missed and get his mind into the wrong place and we want you to be there uh, to provide the proper scoring, execute the rules of the game, be friendly, be professional, try to keep the uh, small talk and chatter for till when the shooting is over at the end of the day. I hope this video, we've covered a lot in this video from how to write on the score sheets to how to mark a killed bird, how to mark a lost bird, the formalities of what could happen if we get a no bird, we get a gun jam, a lot of stuff going on. At the end of the day, all of the most important rules we've covered. Sure, there's a rule that we haven't covered, but we've covered all the most important rules. And one bit of advice that I always give referees is your professionalism and how you address the shooters can surely make up any mishap or miscoming when you sometimes made a mistake on an enforcement of a rule and someone had to correct you on a formality of how something took place. The shooters realize people are human. You could make a mistake. You've got a good outlook on things. You're communicating well. You're announcing things loud and clear. You're putting in a good effort. Any little shortcoming is something that goes wrong that you happen to slip up on. They're gonna help guide you through that. The shooters are there, ask them questions. They are there to have a good time. They are there to shoot well. They're there to enjoy themselves and you're there to enforce the rules and they will help you enforce the rules to the best of your ability in the event that there's a small question. Be professional, wear your ear and eye protection. Stay off your phone. All the ranges really appreciate you being out there and helping them do a good job hosting a competition. Being a referee is a tough job. It's one that myself as a range owner, I really appreciate every one of you out there. It seems like a small task in a big operation of a lot of events going on, but having good referees at each station really help the range owners and the shoot management do a good job, and we really appreciate you being out there helping us.
the rule in the United States for view pairs is that the shooter can get up to two view pairs, but no more. The rule has been recently clarified. You can view the targets in the United States twice, but no more than two times on the view pair. So if the shooter gets in, he wants to look at a pair, great. If he wants to look at a second pair, great. If he wants to look at a third pair, that's forbidden. It's actually against the rules. If the shooter was shooting in England or in Great Britain, most of the time on the report pair there, I've seen they give you one view pair and they give you two view pairs on the, on the sim or the true pairs. I'm not certain that that's the written rule, but that's definitely the formality of what we have seen. That's what we would expect over there in the United States. No more than two pairs. The course manager or the, or the target setter or the mechanics out on the course rely on them, call them in, in question. If it's someone having aggressive behavior, the person to call is the course manager. You know, the, if there's doubt in your decisions and you're not sure what to do, they're there for you, they're there to help you out. Most of the time, I think you're not gonna need them, you're gonna be able to handle the situation properly, but don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to ask questions, don't be afraid to call someone. We're gonna take a moment now, we're gonna be able to show you some footage and some scenarios that are likely to come up out on the sporting clay course. One scenario is you have a shooter that thinks the target was a no bird or irregular. He might question you. He might think, turn around and say, I, I thought that flew off course. I thought the target was broken. You're gonna make the decision based upon what you thought, make the decision by polling the audience. If you have an overwhelming majority, you can make a decision to, to go with them or to stand your ground. On your call, sir. Po. Kill and lost. Oh, hang on a minute. The second bird was an irregular target, surely. No, it's a good bird. Nothing was not broken, flew right in the normal path it's been all day. Nothing outside of what I've seen here. I've been here for six hours watching this station. Did anybody else see that? Sorry, it was a good bird. It's going to be a kill and a loss. Okay. Another scenario that could come up out on the sporting clay range is a shooter attempts a pair. He believes that he hit the target and you believe that he missed it. So you've called the pair dead lost. He turns around and says, well, I thought I killed both birds. You're going to go with what you believe you can judge the audience. If there's an overwhelming majority, you might go with what they believe, but it's ultimately your decision. So that scenario of a shooter claiming that he hit a target will pop up and you're gonna to have to know how to handle that situation. Bow. Dead and lost. Dead and lost? Yeah, dead I and lost. I saw a chip come off that second one. No, I didn't see anything. Not off the bottom left-hand corner. Anybody see anything? Dead and lost. Well, surely you saw that. No, it, listen, sir. If the overwhelming majority of the people saw something, you know, I would, if an overwhelming majority and it was convincing, I, I might give it to you. But it's not very convincing. No one saw anything, and I surely didn't see it. Your decision's final. Please proceed, you have two pairs left. Some other things that are important. You could potentially have a shooter claiming that he hit the bird. He could be bullying you into saying that he hit the target. If you believe he did not hit the target, ultimately your decision is final. You're able to poll the audience and if there's an overwhelming and convincing majority that it seems like they believe he hit the bird and you could have possibly missed it, it's still your judgment. If you feel like they're trying to pull the will over your eyes or, or fool you, make your call. Your call is final and we're gonna go with your call. In the event that someone claims a bird and you look around and no one's saying anything, I would instantly give the result that you think. If you think they missed it, then they missed it. Another scenario, sometimes a shooter could claim that it was a no bird or that it flew irregular. You're the field judge, you've been there all day. The judge is there to make fair decisions. If you think the target that he's shooting at was significantly irregular, 
then what I need you to do is repeat the sta repeat the target, just that pair, not the whole station. If it was the second bird of the pair, the first bird is still established on a report, you'll repeat the pair. If it was a true pair, you'll repeat the whole thing. But we're not gonna be repeating birds because the wind moved it a little bit or a rabbit hopped irregularly or the target just moved slightly to the side. On a rainy day, the targets are gonna fly a little bit irregular and that does not constitute a no bird. What constitutes a no bird is something that's broken or significantly off the trajectory that it's supposed to be or something that flew in a manner that made the situation unsafe. Some other scenarios to consider. Make sure when the shooter steps in the box and out of the box, he loads his gun in a safe way and he steps out of the box with the gun unloaded. It's the shooter's responsibility, but for everyone's safety, we want you to keep, a, keep an eye on that. Some other things that are important, as you're out there at your station, uh, the shooters hopefully throw their shells in the bin for you. If you have some spare time, the range manager would probably appreciate it if you could pick up the spare shells in between rotations or at the end of the day, because they have a lot going on. Make sure you bring water. They should have water out on the course, but you want to have you want to have some water and some lunch with you. It's going to be a long day out there, and be prepared. Another scenario that could happen out on the sporting clay course is that you simply get a no bird. So the target comes out broken. The shooter calls for the pair, whether it's a report pair or a true pair. On the first bird, it comes out broken. The shooter simply calls pull again. Nothing is written down. There's been no shots fired. You're going to give him a new pair because the first bird of the pair was came out broken. Now, what happens on a report pair if he shoots the first target, kills or misses it, and the second bird comes out broken? If that happens, we're going to have to repeat the pair to establish the second shot of a pair. On your call, sir. Thank you. Bow. No bird. Repeat the pair. First one is dead. You're going to establish the second shot by doing the pair over. First one is killed. Thank you. Let me clear the machine real quick. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Bow. Pair killed. Thank you. Another scenario that could happen is we get a no target or a no bird on a true pair or simo pair. When that happens, regardless of hit or miss, nothing is established. The pair must both be in the air, in full, flying at the proper flight for anything to be established. So the shooter will repeat the pair, nothing is scored, and they will have that pair over again on their call. I got uh, George Digweed up. That's Good. correct. Ready to view the birds, all your squads here. Thank you. What have we got? We've got a true pair of going out trap birds. Thank you. Coming from behind that log. Behind this log here, right near that bush. Thank you. True pair. Pull. Would you like to see it again? Yes, please. Pull. Thank you. On your call, sir. True pair. Bow. No bird, no bird. Second bird was broken. You're going to redo the pair on a true pair, sir. Nothing's established. You're going to repeat the pair to establish both targets. But I killed the first target. Doesn't, doesn't count on a true pair or a simo pair. Su pair, simo pair, even on a following pair or a Raphael pair, sir, nothing is established. So you're going to repeat the whole pair to establish both targets. Thank you. Bow. Kill and lost. Another scenario that often happens out on the sporting clay range is a situation where the shooter's gun or ammo malfunctions. Just like the no birds, if it's on a report pair, on the second shot that happens, the result of the first bird is scored, kill or loss, depending upon the result of that target. You'll simply tell the shooter, please repeat the pair. They're going to shoot both targets. The first bird is already established. You can write it down. 
you're going to then score the second target based upon the results of that. For a gun jam, an ammo malfunction, or simply a gun failure on a true pair, regardless if they hit or miss the targets, they're going to repeat the pair to establish both of the targets. All right, on your call, sir. Thank you. Bo. What happened? Gun malfunction? Uh, gun malfunction. All right. Target. I, I heard it. The trigger. Go ahead, heard the go ahead, open it up. Then in the primer, didn't go off. So that's going to be ammo malfunction. You've got three of ammo, three ammo or gun malfunctions per round. I'm going to mark it down. Nothing's established. You're just going to shoot the pair again and you, to, to score your targets. Thank you. Gun malfunction has been noted on your score sheet, sir. Thank you. Got Pablo, seven, shooter number 781 is up. Yep. All Thank right. You. On your call. You got three report pairs when you're ready. Thank you. What happened? I don't know. I think I have a scope malfunction. Gun jam. Yes, okay, got to clear it out. Make sure everything's clear. Thank you. Often when things are in question, the referee's response to the shooter, quickly knowing how to respond is important. You watching the following will help you respond in that situation. Pow! Oh. What happened? It went off, but uh, nothing happened. I All think right. it's a cartridge. Let's open it up. I heard the sound open up. So there's no shells in the gun. It's empty. That'd be a lost pair. On a true pair here, it's a lost pair. If you had a report pair, the first bird is lost. Okay? So you're gonna, you got two more pairs to go because your first pair on this true pair station is, is a lost pair. Okay. Sorry about that. Best of luck. Another scenario that might pop up, it's, it's, a, it's not very common, but it, it occurs, is a situation where the shooter calls for the target, they shoot a shot, and then they call that the second bird, whether they shot at the target or they didn't shoot at the target, they call the target as irregular. They're, they're claiming that the target was either irregular or that it was broken or flew off the trap. That's ultimately your decision. You're the judge. You come up with the answer to that based upon your experience being the field judge at that station for that day. Trapper is ready. Foe. That was a no bird, kill, right? Kill and lost. Sorry? Kill and lost on the second one. You didn't fire at it. But it was a no bird. No, it was perfectly whole bird. What did you I, think? I, 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 to be fair, I thought the bird was completely offline and, and wasn't the same target I've been shooting. Well, we have a little bit of wind today and there's been some birds moving a little bit irregular and it's not outside the standard of what I've seen here all day. I've been here all day. I've seen the bird do that many times. Looked like a fair bird to me. Not much different than anything we've been shooting at all day, sir. It's going to be scored as kill and lost. Your decision's final. The rules that we have been going through are for sporting clays or English sporting as it's referred to in Europe. There's a list of rules that is a little bit longer than what we've went through. We've went through all of the very most important rules and if you can follow these rules and procedures, you're gonna do an excellent job as a referee. FITAS is an organization that shoots a slightly different discipline. It's shot with a low gun and the rules are slightly different. If you wanted to familiarize yourself with those rules, you would have to go to the FITAS organization's website and read up on that. A full list of the rules for sporting clays and English sporting can be found on the NSCA's website, the National Sporting Clays Association. You could type that into Google and find that. It's mynsca.com if you wanted the web address. Or you can look up the association in England, which is the CPSA, the Clay Pigeon Shooting Association. You'll look that up and you can find a full list of rules there. I am confident that everything that we've given you on this video is more than adequate for you to do an excellent job as a referee, and we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to these notes and procedures.